In previous video, we have talked about reading values. Now, having a grid of values, a jagged array of integers that represents our tile map, we will be looking at what exactly patterns are. Uh, patterns are structures that we want to extract from our uh, grid of values and reuse in our output image. We can take a tile as a pattern, but also a grid of tiles. So 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three or at maximum the size of an input. Uh, Multi-tile patterns might, might ensure that structures that are made out of multiple tiles will be more often reproduced in our output image. We can see uh, the first example takes a single tile as a pattern uh, because pattern size is set to 1. Below we can see a multi tile pattern of size 2. Now let's look why multi-tile pattern might be useful. If the straight road tile had another instance and there were different tiles above each instance, uh, the pattern size of one would choose grass version more often. This is because a grass tile is more often present in the input image and we do take frequency as a factor in our procedural generation. In case we take pattern size of 2, we can ensure that the straight road tile, when connecting to the road end tile, shown as a 2x2 two two pattern on the far right side of our slide, will always have 3 tile above the straight road tile. This is because when we have taken pattern of size 2, we say that we strive to repeat the structure of 2x2 two two tile grid in our output image. Whereas when we would take only a, pat a pattern of size 1, so the only one tile, we would not uh, ensure this constraint on our output, so the straight road tile could have either grass or trees, but as we have discussed before, uh, because we, can, uh, we take the frequency of the uh, instances of grass tiles into consideration, you would more probably have the grass tile above it. To picture the process, we must recall how we have turned each tile from our tile map as i value class and mapped it to an index representation, so the integer value. So we have processed in result a grid of integers. Here we can see that the tile representing the end of the road has been given an index of 0 in our value grid. This is because we are processing each grid from a bottom left corner uh, where the end road tile is the first cell in our grid. Our output grid of integers representing values might look like something, something like the values grid on the left side of the slide. And it is all good and well but we have a small issue. We want to repeat overall look of our input in our output. For this, we need to know which tiles can go together in each cardinal direction – up, down, left and right. If we analyze the value grid uh, received as an input, we see that our tile with index 0, so the bottom left corner of our grid, has no neighbors below or to the left. This would make it only fit in the corner, otherwise the algorithm has no clue what can go near it in those two directions. Fortunately, there is a simple solution. We will create an offset. Uh, the uh, grid of values will be treated as a seamless texture, so we will just repeat the same values grid on the right, on the left, up, down and on the diagonal uh, to create an offset of values. And uh, the pattern size that we set is very important because the offset must be the larger, uh, the bigger the size of our pattern. thing to understand here is that the offset allows us to find neighbors. So looking back at the, our cell that contains zero, with the offset present, now we can say that 0 can have value of 3 to the bottom, value of 3 to the top, 
value of 1 to the right and value of 2 to the left. But remember, those are still uh, values, so the in indices representing values. What we will be looking for, we will be looking for patterns, and this uh, is going to be explained next. So let's picture this uh, offset creation process. We are going to assume that our input is just a repeatable texture. We can put it together and it will create a sim seamless bigger image. If we take a look at the grass texture, texture on the left, we can repeat it in any direction and it will still create a seamless image. We assume the same for our input tile map, uh, so the grid representation of it. We simply copy values from the right edge of uh, the value grid to the leftmost offset and repeat the same in each direction. In the corners we take the diagonal values, but it's easier to imagine just repeating the same grid of values on each side. As mentioned before, the pattern size obligates us to make larger offset. Here we can see that the pattern 5x5 five five and lower are possible. The pattern of size 3, for example, would require us to add two values on each side. We will elaborate on finding neighbors in the next video. For now, let's create our pattern grid. So the last step after adding the appropriate offset is to create patterns. Pattern class will take in a value from value grid or an, a grid of values for a pattern of size bigger than one and we will create a new grid that this time represents patterns. This will also be a jagged array of integers. Patterns are mapped as integers onto our new grid. As you can see in the gray grid, we have started creating pattern grid from the bottom left corner of the value grid with offset. So pattern with index zero will not necessarily uh, be the same as value of index zero. In our case, pattern with index zero stores value with index three. On the other hand, pattern uh, with index four will store uh, the value four for the pattern of size one. Let's remember that. We will simply step through each cell of our value grid and create a new grid of patterns. Uh, just as we can see on the left side of the slide. So just to make it clear, uh, let's see our, uh, our value grid with offset in the bottom left corner has value three. And we say we want to find patterns of size one. So we each, uh, each uh, tile, so each value representation of our tile will be one pattern. We see three in the bottom left corner, so we set it as a new pattern and give this pattern an index of zero. Wherever there is a value of three, we place a pattern uh, index zero on our new grid. So it all boils down to stepping through each cell of our value grid and creating pattern representing the value or a grid of values depending on the pattern size. We end up with the uh, representation shown in a gray, uh, the pattern grid. And the indices are different from the value indices. So let's show how would we find patterns uh, of size two inside our grid of values. Uh, here we can see how we would go about it. Uh, we take a grid of values that represents respective tiles on our tile map and save them inside a pattern. So the pattern takes a grid of values instead of one value, where how it was in the pattern size of one, and still represents it as a pattern with a single index. So let's go through the example uh, in the, the top. Uh, we can see that we're taking the corner tiles so the end of the road, the straight road, the grass and the trees. And those tiles are represented 
on our grid value as indices 0, 1, 3 and 4. So our newly created pattern takes this grid of integer indexes of values as an input and create a new pattern. Then we mark this pattern with index 5 because uh, you might remember that we were starting from the uh, bot bottom uh, left corner of our value indices grid when finding patterns and that is why our index is 5. And if we move uh, one step further uh, we will be taking the two straight uh, line road tiles and two tree tiles which are represented in our value grid in the bottom example as 1144 indices and our pattern manager will create a new pattern that will take those uh, grid values and create a new pattern of uh, with index 6. In this slide I want to stress out that patterns of a size bigger than 1 overlap partially each other, meaning value indices that makes the pattern overlap. You can see the example for pattern each marked with a different color. And you can clearly see that each pattern partially take uh, some values of the other pattern. The whole notion to increase pattern size it is to get an output tile map that is more like the input tile map by copying bigger structures from it. To ov the overlapping part help us find more neighbors as patterns that can overlap can be neighbors. The more neighbors we can find in turn allows us to create more varied outputs while preserving the input look. Uh, we will discuss more about it in the next video. So it might be uh, quite confusing and you might be wondering why the hell are we creating a new grid pattern if we have a values grid? Well basically the answer is because the pattern size differs. So for a pattern size of 1 we end up with almost the same a grid just with different indices in it. But if we take larger pattern size, the output pattern grid will be smaller because if we take two values instead of one, then we decrease the size of our uh, grid, so the pattern grid, uh, by one. So here, values grid is six by six, and the pattern grid for pattern size of one is also uh, six by six. Or, but for a pattern size of two, uh, the pattern grid will have a size of 5 by 5 and uh, the, the decrease would be even bigger from a pattern for a pattern of size uh, 3 so this is main reason why we are creating another grid and uh, the main conclusion is that we are transforming our values grid into a pattern grid and uh, in further videos we will be using pattern grid as an input for next step in the next video we will see how we can extract neighbors for each pattern from our pattern grid.